All right, we'll start now. Thanks guys for joining this Intune session. Uh, today is actually the deep dive session one. We already did a demo session, but this will again be a session which is uh, free of cost. And uh, the subsequent sessions uh, which are coming after this will be on paid basis. Uh, we'll be showing up the numbers uh, through which you can through which you can actually discuss about how to get registered and uh, the, uh, the pricing and everything else, okay? Now, uh, I believe there is a mix of audience where few of you will be working on Intune already. Few are uh, uh, migrating towards Intune from other MDM. Few are trying to learn Intune for the first time. And uh, in the last demo session that I had, it seems that more than 80% people wanted me to start from scratch. <laughs> Uh, even though you are already working on Intune. So do let me know if not that's not the case and uh, your expectation are something different, but I'm going to start uh, from the basic basics of Intune, uh, which, uh, uh, and if you are familiar with them, uh, do let me know in the chat section here so that I can skip few of the things and uh, not waste time on the basic things uh, much. All right, so let's get started. So if you remember, this is a diagram from my demo session. Uh, the important thing here was to understand why exactly we are utilizing Intune, why it's important to learn Intune. Yeah, yeah, I'm starting with the basic. Uh, uh, learn, okay, give me two minutes, guys. I think the people are still joining, so I have to click on admit every time. It's distracting a little bit. All right. Now, when we talk about Intune, it's important to understand that why we are discussing Intune, why are we even here to learn Intune? Okay, because Intune is a cloud technology and it has recently um, picked up space and picked up uh, pace as well, where uh, uh, there were not much uh, corporates which were utilizing it in uh, at least 2017. Uh, guys, if you're not speaking, then can you guys go on mute? All right, few more people to admit to. All right. So, uh, mostly it revolves around the uh, the data that the corporates have. Uh, it's about the security of the data and uh, how we relate uh, to the data is you might be a user um, who is using one particular type of network uh, and let's say one particular type of application on a particular set of device, maybe it uh, Android, iOS, Windows, to basically access your corporate data, right? That's, that's the end goal. And uh, like, similar to all the corporate shifts in the recent years that they have is uh, they have a uh, they have a condition now to make the data available wherever the employees are that means if you are having your own personal device but you still want to access the corporate data it's the responsibility of your IT team to make sure that you are able to access that data but it's not that simple that giving access to the data on your personal device, which might not have any security boundaries or which might not even understand security is a critical risk, right? Now, so there have been lots of uh, work being done in, in this field, uh, which is also known as mobile device management, where the companies are targeting to lock down or companies are trying to deploy some kind of a restrictive policy on the device they can control so that you, they can control the data, okay? Now, the end goal is to make sure that the data doesn't get into the wrong hands, also to make sure that there is a data security and privacy in picture. Now, if everything revolves around the data, how does Intune comes into picture, right? You, uh, you have a user, you have a network, you have an application, you have a device, and uh, all these are uh, required to access the data, right? Now, this comes along if I go to the next slide. So if you are already working in a modern workplace where you have a little bit understanding of how M365 or how Azure Active Directory works, it's good. If not, I'll be teaching them along in this course. So 
no worries on that okay so if we are concerned about the users let's say how the user is going to authenticate how the user will be secure how i am going to track what my user is doing so that is taken care by the product of azure active directory right azure active directory is capable of uh, doing the authentication managing those licenses having auditing policies and everything that makes a user sign in or a user existence secure now with respect to network this is under assumption that you are in a corporate network corporate wi-fi and you are trying to access your corporate data in that case also the com the companies doesn't have to care much because they have uh, enterprise level firewall already available there that they make sure that they scan the network and make sure the network is um, safe so uh, the application is again uh, you don't care about the application the uh, the software engineers develop the application, making sure that there is no bug. And uh, they are also pretty much controlled via the access control mechanisms in Azure Active Directory. If some of you may have seen that enterprise registration or app registration kind of thing, that's also pretty based lockdown. Now, in addition to this, you have a device, right? You have a device section through which you access those corporate data. Now, all the three things have been taken care of. How do you control the device, right? That's where any MDM solution, it's not just in tune, that's where any mobile device management solution comes into picture. Your company might choose to have Intune, your company might choose to have AirWatch, your company might, uh, might choose to have Mobile Iron or a Google MDM as well. Today we are discussing about Intune. So the device, the control that you want to have over the devices can be achieved using a MDM solution uh, similar to Intune. Okay, now uh, the data is a bigger picture, right? You are doing all this kind of things. So you are doing all the all to make sure that, okay, the user doesn't get compromised. The network doesn't get compromised. The application doesn't get compromised. The desi device doesn't get compromised just to make sure that your data remains protected, okay? Now, in order to protect the data, there is also a new Microsoft solution, Microsoft Purview, which uh, has a security which goes with the data. If your data moves from point to A to point B, you can now have some kind of security mechanisms to uh, make sure that there is no data leak or there is no unintentional data leak, okay? Now, if this slide is pretty much clear to you guys, I'll move to the next one. Uh, this slide was particularly about the importance of Intune and how it fits in the uh, security ecosystem, like how important is data and why. Uh, uh, okay, uh, guys, if you're not speaking, please go on mute. All right. All right, now, <clears throat> Coming to the cloud world, uh, it, it was all easy uh, when it was when uh, you have servers on premise and infrastructure and network and everything. But if you choose to go with any cloud provider, let's say Microsoft, uh, Amazon, or Google, you have to understand that there are different kinds of uh, subscription license model, which are basic, base, uh, basically the payment models in cloud. Now, as you know, there are different kinds of uh, infrastructures available in cloud. You can choose to have infrastructure as a service. You can choose to have a platform as a service. You can choose to have software as a service. Now, all this works on a different payment model. And uh, here are a few of the examples that you can see on screen. Uh, IS and PaaS have uh, virtual machines, storage, app services, software as a services, uh, uh, is something where Intune comes into picture, Office 365, Microsoft Teams, Azure Active Directory, or even M365, you can consider this as a software as a service. Now, this is important to understand, although this is not, a, uh, there is no, uh, uh, there's no technical framework here or anything to understand, but it, it becomes important because uh, when you start troubleshooting into and when you start working with any SaaS solution, the first and the foremost important thing is to also make sure that you assign those licenses, right? Now, in order to do that, you will have, or maybe there is a separate team in your uh, company who does that. But the important thing is 
a user is assigned a license so that they can access the SaaS service. Now, in this case, a user will be assigned Intune license. One of the Intune license as Intune license comes into part of different um, uh, licensing model like Microsoft E3, Microsoft E5, uh, those kind of things. So it, de it depends on what kind of licenses your companies are going to utilize, okay? It, it, and on top of that, you can then make the selection and uh, have those things. Uh, subscription comes into picture when you're, let's say, if you have, uh, you're working on virtual machines, storage, app services, or any other kind of compute services where you have pay as you go, where uh, you are charged only for the things that you have consumed and you are charged only for the things that you are going to use, right? Uh, licenses based model are like per user per month basis. Okay. Now, if this is very clear, let's move here. So you might have seen a uh, different kind of uh, architecture uh, thing uh, of Intune over internet. I'll not get into that just as of now. We'll definitely go into that later. But uh, the basic building blocks of Intune is, hold on, I have to admit a few people. Okay, uh, so the basic building block of Intune is uh, Azure Service Fabric. And it's not just Intune, even Microsoft Teams and many other Microsoft solutions like M365, Office 365 actually are built on Azure Service Fabric. And the database that Intune uses is the Azure Cosmos TV, which is a NoSQL uh, database. And definitely uh, you are working with the microservices world because uh, Azure Service Fabric is kind of a orchestration machine which controls all these microservices. Now, let me give you a few example of uh, uh, microservices. I think this is even uh, you can see uh, in your portal. And uh, can anyone in the chat uh, can suggest like, uh, are you guys having access to your personal Intune lab? just to make sure that if you guys are already doing it. If not, I'll share a link from where you can start having your Intune tenant for free for one month and play around, okay. I'll drop the link anyway, I believe, okay. All right, now, when it comes to the microservice architecture, uh, what happens is you have different nodes available where this serves a very dedicated function. Let's say you are trying to uh, deploy a policy, or let's say you're trying to enroll a device to Intune, and we will come into, uh, we'll discuss this about like, why do we need to do that in later point of time? Uh, for now, just assume that you need to perform some action, but for doing that, you have to reach out to a public cloud where there's one particular service setting just for that particular function. And that microservices are built for, let's say one function and can be scaled up to nth number of time, depending on the load that they have on their infrastructure. Now, this is a very basic uh, Intune architecture that what platform it's built on, what database that it's used, what component uh, it might be having, but it's very rare. Okay, let me add a few folks again. Sorry about that. All right, uh, before I move forward, let me uh, show you guys about portal. Are you guys able to see my screen? Somehow I lost that. Uh, uh, yes, no, anything in the chat also maybe? Yes, yes. Oh, okay, great. So uh, the thing that I was talking about the infrastructure as a service platform as a service, you can see that these all things lie in the Azure uh, services where you have subscription based model for this compute, networking, storage, web app, and all those things. You have different other SaaS solutions mentioned here like Intune that utilize our licensing based model. Okay, now this is uh, uh, where you will start with your own Intune signing tenant. This is for the lab, I'm going to paste it in the chat window here. So if you have not signed up already for an Intune tenant, uh, you'll be utilizing this article to go through and sign up for an Intune tenant because this will give you access to your own particular tenant, something like this, 
once it loads up. So, okay, while it loads up, uh, it's it's um, uh, you don't have to enter any credit card or anything here. Uh, it's just that you enter a few of the information here and uh, give your email address. Uh, you, it can be a personal one. It will ask you to create a tenant. And by tenant, if you are not aware what a tenant is, I'll also have this covered in, in, in the coming few minutes. And once you are uh, done with this particular uh, article, you will have a Intune tenant, something like this, a portal where you'll be able to see all your Intune infrastructure. That's important because uh, all those uh, in the next sessions or even from this session, I'll be showing pretty much uh, the Intune portal. So it will be definitely a good option to have you uh, for your reference as well, okay? And the more you play around this portal, the more uh, questions you will have and the more uh, things you can ask me, okay? All right, now, this is the Intune portal where uh, you will be doing most of your things. Uh, will not directly jump into Intune because I have to cover the Azure Active Directory first before we move to Intune. That is a crucial part of learning Intune as well, okay? But just to give you a glimpse that uh, this might be the first time for many few of you, but I believe many of you would have already seen this. But if you have not, uh, I would highly recommend to create this Intune lab session. Uh, into lab tenant. This is free for one month and then uh, we can get started. Okay. Now in here, the few things that you, that captures your uh, mind is it gives you a tenant name. It gives you MDM authority. It gives you a service release version, which is clickable total license user, tenant location, account status, total enrolled device, all those things. Okay. Now the tenant name, uh, that it grabs is basically when you would be doing this particular uh, article follow-up, you will have to create a tenant. Uh, you have to create a tenant, which is nothing but an address in Microsoft Azure data platform, where it gives your own personal or it gives you own company space where you can deploy services and all those things. Now, this is, uh, portal azure.com and then clicking on Azure Active Directory will land you on this particular page where this is basically a home for your Azure Active Directory. How many of you are already working or have heard about Azure Active Directory? Or is this new to someone? Uh, can you type in the chat? New, okay. All right, let me then switch to uh, a basic of uh, Azure Active Directory and then we'll uh, share again the portal. Okay, where is this screen one? Um, quick confirmation if you can again see my screen, it should be a whiteboard thing. Yeah, it seems. Yes, yes, sir. Okay, thanks. All right, so let's say, and I'm going to give very small uh, examples. Come on. All right, let's say uh, you are a company which makes, oops. Let's say you are a company which makes a uh, uh, which makes a, a, cold, a cold drink. Okay, let's uh, let's say you are a company whose job is to make cold drink. Okay, now if you are not aware of Azure Active Directory, what you will have is you might have a website where you are taking the orders and you have uh, um, uh, and you have a database where you are storing all those information and this is sitting in your local AD local active directory where you have users and uh, users as an in employees information and you have those users part of certain groups where you are maybe utilizing that group for doing a number of things you have many different uh, internal applications 
where you are utilizing it for maybe for employees hr system or salary distribution and all those things so consider you have a active directory environment which consists of uh, three to four servers where you are doing um, a different number of uh, tasks on all those servers now in order to maintain the security and managing those users and everything you will have uh, active directory in place okay this will be a logical boundary of all your infrastructure in on premises and also will be the uh, main party to authenticate the servers to users and authenticate the servers to servers now let's say this is where you have uh, uh, your 100 employees uh, engaged okay taking care of your local it infrastructure uh, you have to make sure that you purchase new hardware you have to make sure that this particular application is up and running because you have to take orders of cold rings right um, and uh, similarly let's say uh, you have to also make sure that if you're running uh, windows servers those windows servers are patched and are heavily protected so you will deploy uh, uh, you will also have a, a network parameter where you will be scrutinizing those traffic which is coming in or which is going out to make sure that you don't have any data leak right now all those things okay are done at local active directory that means these are managed by you you are uh, you are basically managing all those things now let's say your company does the cold drink production okay the main job of your company is to uh, produce the cold drinks it's not basically to take care of this server making sure that the users are authenticated in the correct manner making sure that this particular application is up and running all the time making sure that you buy additional hardwares every time there is a summer sale going on okay there are lots of things uh, which are um, an um a uh, 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 overhead to you when you are managing things at on prem now what happens if you uh, do the same thing online okay normally you would set up a tenant which is a home address in azure okay it will give you a basic access to azure active directory okay it will give you a, 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 a address in Azure Active Directory where this will have your users, your groups. Okay, you can migrate your applications here. Okay, uh, in the sense like, let's say if your on-premises server, which is let's say S1, is hosting one particular application. Okay, and this application is let's say running on IIS. Now, in order to run the application with, let's say, just is used for employee salary is uh, is, is basically uh, uh, to have this IS and to have IS running, you need a server. OK, but in here in cloud, you don't need to have that dependency. You can just rent a, a platform as a service like app service and you can directly have that application running without needing or without caring about what is the underlying infrastructure. So you don't need to buy in, uh, the hardware underneath, okay? You don't need to update that hardware. You don't need to make sure that you do a fail safe planning if the demands are going to be high. You just, with a just click of a button, you can scale this to let's say up to five different instances of the same application servicing you the same thing, okay? now this particular things this azure ad which comes into picture gives you a lots of different um, infrastructure access this azure ad basically is where your users will set your groups application even your few of the devices which uh, in future you are going to enroll in intune will be visible in azure ad and this is basically your whole company where you will be managing with only few clicks and not depending on this many number of um, services and infrastructure compromises okay uh, azure ad in nutshell is basically the advanced version of local ad but with the power of cloud and with that it gives you the ability to only focus on what is important to your organization and also 
to make sure that you are prepared for even worst case scenarios oh, at a single point of time. Okay. All right. Now, if this is clear to you, uh, the tenant that I was talking about, the tenant, uh, which uh, uh, this is the tenant. So let's say if I'll bring that screen here. Okay. This is the uh, Azure Active Directory uh, page that you will get once you sign up in the uh, Intune or any of the Microsoft services. Okay. It's not just about Intune. If you sign in with uh, Microsoft M365, if you sign in with Office 365, if you sign in with just Azure for doing any, uh, for any compute related thing, it will, you will be having a, uh, associated Azure Active Directory. Now in here, you will have a different set of users that you can um, control, basically uh, assign licenses and- uh, uh, I don't think that was a question. So guys who have just joined, uh, please make sure that you unmute because by default Zooms, uh, adds you unmuted. Okay. All right. Uh, so, so these are the users that you will have and UPN is one of the another important concepts in identities uh, in Azure Active Directory and even in Intune because this is basically is what with which you will log into the Intune portal. Okay, and I'll show you how this UPN based identity work. Okay, now this is your Azure Active Directory and the tenant that I was talking to comes from this. Okay, uh, let's say uh, if I sign in for the first time you will get an address, uh, something similar to this. Uh, Cloud Lab Infra is the name I selected and then it appended on Microsoft.com on its own. Okay, so the first time that you create anything will have this particular domain name. So let's say if you are, uh, 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 if you are a company called ABC, you will have abc.onmicrosoft.com. The second domain name that you see is Cloud Lab Corp.info is something that I have purchased. And similarly, any company which is utilizing Microsoft's Azure Active Directory will have their own verified domain here, okay? This is something that you can purchase. Uh, I have purchased this from GoDaddy and have verified it. If there's a verification steps that uh, uh, basically you need to go through different things and it will make sure that, uh, just to make sure that you own the DNS records, okay? Once you have this, this particular thing means now your users can have an email address or an identity, something as uh, abc at the rate cloudlabcorp.info, okay? That can be utilized for your um, uh, identity and uh, UPN. Uh, I'll not go that deep in this particular portal as of now, but uh, one important thing that I want to share before we move to Intune is about uh, how does authentication works in uh, Azure Active Directory. Now, the Azure Active Directory uh, basically gives you many of the security features. One of them is to make sure that it authenticates you uh, in a correct fashion and, and it routes the correct traffic to the correct tenant. For an example, let's say you are trying to log into Office uh, 365, which is let's say you, you are going to log into portal.office.com, okay? Now, typically what happens is you will be uh, landing up in a page where it's asked you for a username and a password, right? Now, username is where you give that UPN, uh, user principal name. And on basis of that UPN, it basically does two things. It picks up the tenant name and whatever is mentioned here and whatever the domain um, uh, that you have. Let's say for example, let's say for example, it picks up office.com itself, okay? Let's say there is a company called office.com and it has an employee called ABC, okay? Now it has picked it that ABC at the office.com wants to access its office. So I have to uh, authenticate it. What it does is uh, 
it checks whether office.com is a, a federated domain or a managed domain okay and i'll tell you what are these but in a nutshell it basically means that if an organization is having a on premises presence that means if they are managing their resources on their own they would have a server which is known as federation servers to basically help in authentication now in ad who does the authentication in ad you will have a domain controller uh, i'm writing dc in a shortcut but a domain controller who does the authentication following a kerberos protocol okay now there are also scenarios where tenants or where big companies they don't uh want azure ad to have access to their um, um, uh, like users password it's not that they will have a password uh, in, in in plain text even though they want to make sure that they are doing the authentication on their own okay so in those scenarios many of the big companies uh, redirect the request to their on premises federation services or cloud federation servers okay which does the authentication via their own ad many companies what they do is they sync their password to azure active directory and uh, they uh, rely on azure active directory for doing the authentication okay this important thing uh, is for you to consider because there are many scenarios where let's say if you're going to sign in to intune uh, while trying to do a enrollment let's say company portal is the application which is giving from a given by intune for doing your enrollment now if you are doing the enrollment you have to first sign in now if during the sign in flow if it breaks down in any of this part your sign in might be interrupted but your end user or uh, you might think that uh, the intune enrollment is not going through but that's actually the sign in flow which got uh, are disturbed okay uh, so as to you uh, how will you differentiate if that's an intune problem or if that's uh, uh, if someone else uh, that's where the little bit of azure ad basics will come into picture okay now this was a theory but how does look this looks in, like uh, in in practical okay so uh, you just uh, understood about federated and managed i'll tell you a very quick trick to basically detect how a tenant either uh, let's say if a tenant is uh, utilizing uh, federated authentication or managed authentication okay uh, let me bring another browser here okay and uh, let's say uh, i'm trying to access portal.office.com okay now for example for example uh this is my domain okay i'm picking some different let's say abc at the rate nike.com okay nike which makes the shoes let's say if they have a presence on azure ad and obviously they will have let's see what kind of authentication mechanism are they using are they using federated or they're using managed now if i click on next and it gives you information like i am taking you to or like taking you to the respective uh, infrastructure that means it's federated okay federation means it's it's facilitating in authentication by something else not by azure ad okay so if i click on next see what happens so it says says taking you to your organization signing page if this is the message that you get this directly means that this domain is federated and uh, they are utilizing this okta as their federation partner now okta and ping identity or adfs are the federation services which are used in identity world uh, adfs is from microsoft adfs is nothing but active directory federation services okta and ping identities are different companies which does the same thing okay uh, similarly let's say uh, let's say what microsoft is using okay let's say if this has to be uh, microsoft are they using adfs or are they using azure ad okay so this is also transferring to their own adfs or taking it to organization signing page okay so in here you will clearly see that it's using adfs obviously it's their own so they'll be using adfs page okay now these were the examples of of federated 
uh, environment, authentication environment. And if many of you would be corporate employees, and if you're logging to Office 365, you might see this behavior, similar behavior. If you are redirected to something else, your organization is using a federated authentication. In one of the sense, this also means that they do not, or they are not comfortable with the uh, giving 100% password authentication mechanism just to Azure AD. That means you are keeping few of the most important things of authentication to yourself. Now, if you are interested in learning how this works, I can have a separate session in detail, but that's purely Azure Active Directory and, and you might not be working on this. Few of you would, if you have a, a complete Azure AD uh, uh, and Intune uh, mix team, uh, maybe then you would have uh, to work on that. Now let's say uh, this is my test account. Okay, if I click on this, you uh, you see that it didn't took me anywhere. It just prompted me to enter the password. That means I am syncing or I have created my user account directly on Azure portal, and I don't need any federation server to authenticate my, the users on my behalf. Okay, now these are the two different scenarios that you will face while doing a user authentication and. This is pretty common in all the SaaS services, even in Intune. The Intune will always start with us authentication, and this is where you can find the difference and also to scope basically that what is Intune boundary and what is not Intune boundary. Many of the teams or many of the organizations have Azure Active Directory team separate than the mobile device management team that is the Intune team. Okay. All right. Now, if this is clear, I'll move to few of the things where, uh, okay, it's on different screen. Okay, so in the presentation, you uh, you learned about the Intune architecture on a very basic level. I'm not doing any uh, GIF of like, okay, where Intune sits and how these things are coming and going as of now, but just to say that, okay, these are the public uh, available information that the platform which Intune uses is Azure Service Fabric. The database that it connects to and utilizes for storing your devices, your device config policies, and all those things is Azure Cosmos TV. And the components that uses uh, is definitely the microservices applications, okay? Now, what are the few examples and how do they look like? Uh, just the URLs you can see on the screen, okay? Let's say for Windows enrollment, uh, and I'll show you how you can also grab this for your lab tenant that you can, will build uh, is, uh, you will be having this format where you will have a manage.microsoft.com slash stay slate enrollment service device enrollment.svc in format one of Microsoft services. Okay. Manage.microsoft.com is basically in tune ends point and end point. And before that, FEF and AMSUA0102 is basically to make Azure and Intune understand which particular location are you coming from, okay? Now, if you remember, let me go back to my Intune portal. Uh, if you remember this, okay. Yeah, so if you go, uh, if you log into the, uh, this, uh, portal, uh, Intune portal, you will see that your tenant location is North America 0102. Now, how does North America translate is basically what this examples of uh, what this URL is showing you that they are, they would have some kind of their own um, uh, naming conventions of writing that down. It's although it's not important, you will not be able to do any kind of troubleshooting with this URL, but it's just good to know. And also if some of you are on this call for just to complete an Intune interview, this might be a good thing to know how Intune uh, is built up and how, what are the few things that you can see from your Intune portal uh, directly. And if you are curious about how did I get to this page, uh, if you just come to this page and do a F12, F12 is basically a browser trace. It will give you uh, uh, all uh, all information um, in the network section, and you can pretty much collect it from there directly. It was taken from there itself. Okay. Okay. Let's go back to the different portal. 
Okay, uh, coming back to Azure Active Directory, you already uh, learned about the tenant name, uh, the authentication of the two major scenarios, the licenses and the, okay, the Azure ID Connect is something which uh, I'll cover now. So let's say you have, uh, uh, let's say you again, you have a similar scenario where let's say you are, uh, you are a cold ring company, which is doing a local AD I'm hearing some noise. Let me try to mute it. Okay. Let's say you are a cold ring company which has a local AD and you have different servers and you are managing and working through all the servers and have a healthy infrastructure. Now tomorrow, let's say your management decides to... Okay. Uh, let's say tomorrow your management decides to move to Azure. Why? Because let's say your management wants to start utilizing one of the SaaS solution, which is Intune. Now, since Intune works on a licensing based model and the license is tied up to a tenant, the users has to be present in the Azure tenant. Okay. Now there are two ways that the users will be present. If you are a small company, if you are a company which is totally um, in cloud, you will be creating those users in cloud, okay? But let's say if you are already a very big company, let's say you are Pepsi and uh, or Coca-Cola and uh, you have already in invested huge infrastructure in your managing your local AD, you have all those users here. Now, what is the way that you bring your users from here to here? In that scenario, you use a tool called Azure AD Connect. In a nutshell, what it does is basically brings your users, groups, devices to Azure AD. Uh, the benefit of syncing users in this way is to have users presence in Azure and then you can start assigning licenses unless and until you don't have users present in Azure, you will not be able to assign any of the license and hence you will not be able to use any of the cloud services like Intune, Office 365, M365, Dynamics, all those kind of things, okay? Uh, so that's why it's important to sync users from on-premises to cloud if you already have a huge local AD infrastructure local Active Directory infrastructure, okay? Now, this Azure AD Connect is itself a very big topic in identity. And if you are learning about identity, this will again, this itself might take up to like close to eight hours to understand how exactly it's, it happens. But just to give you an idea, how it does is it basically have a connector. Uh, it basically is a piece of software which sits in one of the, uh, member servers by member servers means uh, it's domain uh, joined to your local uh, domain. That means you have a DC and one of the uh, server is uh, connected to all of the servers will be connected to DC, but it's one of the member servers where you will have that particular Azure AD connect tool installed. Now, while doing the configuration, you will be asked to set up a connector of let's say local AD connector and one will have a cloud connector which will be called as AD connector and uh, there will be a temporary database created which is called as metaverse where your users are kept uh, temporarily while coming in from local AD uh, it uh, this is the step number one it gets stored in metaverse and then it's posted in Azure AD, okay? This happens very quickly if everything goes uh, in a right way and you have your users present in Azure, okay? And then here you can start assigning them license and they can start utilizing those services, okay? Uh, the cloud services. Now, uh, this plays a very uh, basic uh, uh, a step in Intune, but it's very important and it's normally comes up in doing Intune troubleshooting and understanding how exactly it works. Now, let's say you are already working in Intune and you are part of L2 or L3 uh, or even uh, uh, you are part of some decision-making team where you have to 
um, understand how exactly one of the Intune solution would fit into the picture if you have a very big organization, this Azure AD uh, knowledge will come handy, okay? If you guys are, uh, in, in if few of you guys are new to Azure Directory, uh, Azure Directory totally, and uh, you are going with a paid version of this training, uh, do let me know. I can have a weekly session to just cover up view, uh, with the speed, like how exactly the enterprises work with uh, Azure Active Directory and what they do, uh, all those things. And I'll cover the application, all those things. But it's not related with Intune. So only if you are interested in that, do let me know. Otherwise, it doesn't have any uh, direct uh, 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 and a direct relation, but definitely uh, the underlies of every cloud technology of Microsoft identity is Azure Active Directory. It's good to know, but not a must to know. All right. Uh, if that is clear, any doubts? I'll just take a pause to uh, check if you guys are. PowerShell required to work in Intune? No, uh, it's not required. It's one of the things that admins push to Windows devices to do a number of things. It's not required though, but it's always good to know. Sort of, uh, yeah, I'm not sure if I have to unmute you, but I think you Hi. should. Okay, uh, I'm audible to everyone. Yes, yes, sir. All right, so I just wanted to let people, everyone that uh, as you have said that there is a option for one month of trial for uh, Microsoft 365 plan. Okay, mm -hmm. so I just wanted to let people know that they could have a uh, avail the license for lifetime. Okay, and that will be completely free okay. and it's very legal. Okay, if you would like uh, go and browse the Google, okay, and type there my uh, space visual studio. Okay, and then the developer option. So you can go to that website. And uh, after that, once you register over there with your Outlook ID, all right. So after that, you can get option for Microsoft 365. There will, you will not be required for any credit card, any debit card, nothing. What you have to do, like once you're registered there, you will have only three months of subscriptions. But if you want to extend the validity to the lifetime, you have to keep uh, uh, like uh, doing some changes over there. Say suppose you are uh, creating a user or deleting some user, you are creating a site uh, site in SharePoint, anything. Uh, there is something has to be, uh, changes has to be there in a month. Then only that thing will be like uh, in a lifetime validity would be there. So the people can have everything except the Windows 10 license and the uh, uh, Teams voice subscription. Rather everything will be there. That is a E5 license, which is the highest license of the Microsoft, so they can get this thing over there, and that's completely free. That's all. Perfect, perfect. If that's the way, that's that's great. So, uh, can you pin that URL here? Uh, just give me a while. I'm just pasting the URL over here so that you can you all guys can uh, have it. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Salman, no uh, SOCM will not be covered in this one. Kamlesh Intune application packaging. If you want, that's a very small thing uh, we can do. But ideally not pa part of this course. Autopilot, yes. Autopilot will be very detailed. Is this class for every day or only on weekend? Only on weekend, especially on Sundays. Uh, the coming uh, weekend, it will be on Saturday, but from the next, it will be on Sundays. Do Intune have out of box CISM benchmark policy can be configured. It will go with the script to deploy with partial command. GK, can you elaborate more? I have, I think it's uh, with respect to security, it's only Microsoft security baselines. That's for only for Windows not for anything else. But if you have something else in mind, do let me know. Uh, okay. Overview of Windows Auto Patch. Okay, They're, they actually uh, brought down the Microsoft Manus desktop and then released Windows Auto Patch. That's not part of this Intune. It's not related though. It's a totally different management solutions for uh, Windows and M365 updates. Ta -ta -ta. 
All right. All right. Yeah, hi. Uh, I have one query. Autopilot is for you no know, lab plus uh, theory, right? Yes. Okay, you will teach math. I mean, uh, in the lab, how means in the production, how we are doing same same way, right? Ah, uh, yes. Okay, so uh, uh, basically the autopilot flow in theory, uh, followed by how autopilot works in uh, lab, and few of the common applications that enterprises go with, and how to troubleshoot basically if thing goes wrong and things do go wrong. So just to make sure that uh, what are the things uh, that you can check, uh, make sure of, and how to troubleshoot yourself, those kind how of things. How many days this course will be? Sorry? How many days this course? At least two months, okay. 2.5, yeah. Weekends, right? Weekends, yeah. Uh, I can have a question and answer session midweek as well. If you guys are doing labs and have some questions, yeah, you can come good. on a, yeah, on a Wednesday or a Thursday, we can decide and we, we will have that as well. Okay. If you have Azure license, can you work for Intune or we have to take any other license? Azure uh, has a different uh, uh, subscription model. Uh, if you have M365 uh, license, E3, E5, F1, or even Intune dedicatedly, uh, you can uh, uh, work with the lab. Like I think Sora was mentioning, uh, if you take that visual benefit, visual studio benefit, basically it gives you a $150 for Azure subscription and it will, I think, give you a, a, a option for SaaS uh, license as well. I'm not using that method, so I'm not sure uh, if it allows you to extend but uh, yeah, it uh, gives you $150 every month for subscription part that I can confirm. Please need depth explanation on conditional configuration and compliance policy. Okay, the conditional access is a part of Azure Active Directory. It's not part of Intune, but yes, I will cover that because that's pretty common. Uh, complete Intune will be covered or MDM alone. Well, Intune is MDM, so I'm not sure what your question is. Okay, so when you talk about the federation, right, you mean yeah. the password hashing, uh, right? I mean, that is where I mean, no, had uh, federated is uh, a totally different password hash sync is another method where the companies sync hash using Azure AD Connect. Uh, there's a separate thing which runs under the service of Azure AD Connect and it syncs your password in different batches to make sure that Azure AD is aware that it now has access to the passwords. When we say we are uh, we are uh, relying on authenticating my users using my on-premises ED, mm -hmm. uh, 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 that doesn't mean uh, that we are allowing the password hash. I mean password sync only to happen from ED to Azure ED, right? No, then, no, yeah, that, okay. So to that, I think you already have uh, working experience, or you're already working. So here is one small thing for you. If you can still see my screen. In a federated scenario, what happens is, I can go a little deep. Uh, let's say this is your DC and there is a member server, which is your federation service. I'll take ADFS or treat this as any of the federation services that your company using, okay? Now, obviously this have a trust between uh, a DC and this member server, okay? Now, while doing this uh, federation, you will have a trust between this federation service and your Azure AD instance. Let's say, just for example, just let's say if you're working for TCS, okay, your TCS will have, uh, uh, let's say if they are use, using a, a, a ADFS, you would have something called as ADSGS.TCS.com. And this is the URL which ADFS will be using. Now, how exactly this works, okay? Let's say, you are a user who is sitting at home uh, on a private network, home network, and trying to access Microsoft Teams, okay? MT is Microsoft Teams, just for example. And uh, that Microsoft client uh, uh, is something that you are trying to log in for the first time, okay? Another, if it's the first time, it has to authenticate you. Now, the first time, uh, the Teams, which is a part of the cloud solution of Azure Active Directory, or uh, Azure, 
it basically only trusts Azure AD. Okay, it doesn't know TCS.com. It doesn't know anything else. Now, at the back end, what happens is your request will go to TCS.com. Following that, at the rate TCS.com Home Realm Discovery, which is called okay, it's called as Home Realm Discovery to identify where your home is. Okay, where your home tenant is. Once it does that, once the request reaches to the uh, TCS.com Azure AD tenant, it identifies that my domain is actually federated one. That means my on-premises infrastructure is not syncing the password. And also uh, the user was not created in Azure AD directly so that it will be a managed, so that I'll have access to that password and I can act, uh, authenticate the user. What it does is it sends that request to your on-premises ADFS or Okta or Ping identity server saying, uh, boss, uh, I need to authenticate this user. Do you know this user? Okay. Now from this to this, it happens on all uh, uh, web protocols, right? Uh, this, this would be a normal OAuth or open ID connect. Okay. These are the web protocols. Now the federation service would be working on some other protocols, let's say WS Federation, okay? Uh, so the AED will reach out to your ADFS infrastructure saying, boss, uh, let's say your name is, uh, uh, didn't get your name, so I'll take an example. Let's say your name is Rohit, okay? And uh, so this AD will have a request uh, sent to your local ADFS with this, the UPN that you mentioned, okay? Now the ADFS doesn't authenticate you, okay? It will send this request back to DC saying, boss, can you find this user Rohit and authenticate that user? Now DC will say, okay, let me check in my database it will find rohit and with the upn that you have sent it will do the authentication with the password that you entered and will then send a kerberos token to your adfs now this adfs will understand that kerberos token and now it has that approved thing that okay boss rohit is authenticated and give him access now this ADFS will convert that Kerberos token into a SAML token because that's what the web entity will understand. This will not understand Kerberos. Kerberos is an on-premises authentication protocol. It doesn't work in cloud world. Well, there is a way that Azure Active Directory domain services have evolved, but that's a different thing. Okay, now it will give you a SAML token and then Azure AD will consume that SAML token, extract, what the information been giving for Rohit, let's say it, it, it extracted Rohit and Rohit's employee ID, let's say 13979, okay? And then it will again build that OAuth token and have that employee ID passed so that team service can now uh, give access to uh, Rohit, okay? So it works in this way. So federation means this way. Now, if you're talking about password sync, uh, in password sync, what happens is, and don't worry, I'll be sharing this whiteboard. So if, if you are uh, interested in that, you can have access. In password sync, what happens is you have a DC, you have Azure AD, you have Azure AD connect tool sitting in between, okay, on a member server. What it does is you basically sync that password to Azure AD. Let's say Rohit is again logging to the same Microsoft team application and the AD was trying to look for Rohit. And at this time it found that, okay, I have the Rohit information because I have the Rohit's password. Obviously it's not plain text. So there are a number of things which gets encrypted and even the AD folks won't be able to decrypt it. Uh, but you got the gist. So it will have the username and the password here itself. So it doesn't do all those redirection for authenticating user uh, at this location. And the authentication happens here itself. Okay. This is password hash sync. Okay. And so we configure this in the Azure AD Connect, right? That's yes. My, uh, yes. Okay. yes. 
I think there is a just a checkbox to enable password hash synchronization. Correct. Okay. I mean, uh, uh, suppose if I create a user in Azure AD, okay, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, suppose uh, uh, I have an AD and Azure AD connect is configured, mm -hmm. my some of my legacy application that needs to be authenticated to AD. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so if I create a user in Azure AD, uh, is it a bi-directional sync? Uh, uh, suppose some legacy application I'm trying to access. How she will get authenticated to on-premises AD? Uh, sorry, Andrew, if I'm deviating from topic, just want to understand what the discussion. So you mean to say you have Azure AD connect between AD and uh, Azure uh, AD, and you have a legacy application which only understand your on-premises identity? Yes, I create a user in Azure AD. You create a user in Azure AD. I think uh, in between they removed any uh, sync back. Uh, the only thing that you can sync back was a password write back, but uh, I'm not sure if they allow uh, the identity of the identity piece to sync back, maybe, but I think that was causing many problems where in between they avoided it. Uh, there were also device write back, which used to happen, uh, but I'm not sure on this one, but if you are interested, I can check and get back. Uh, just drop me a note. Sure. Sure. Yeah. One, one last question. During the training, you no, know, you told some of the topics will not be covered in the session. Uh, some paid, uh, yeah, some paid subscription. Something you mentioned. Uh, is it is it uh, any any training uh, separately? You'll be. Uh, 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 so today is uh, the second day of the Intune training. Uh, I have already taken uh, an Intune demo session that was free. Today is also free, uh, but the next session which is consecutive to this one where we'll be deep diving to into an enrollment and how the enrollment works enrollment flow those are the chargeable sessions so you'll have to like uh, um, get in touch with the joint technology and be part of that uh, 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 community which uh, which is paying for that training oh okay okay sorry okay. i didn't attend the last training that's why i asked yeah no worries no worries i think mm -hmm. amit if you're on this call just uh, connect with uh, the guys i'll also have that uh, number mentioned in the last slide and they can rahul the charges will be discussed by amit uh, you can have this his number i think um, yeah this is the number on screen you can contact this uh, and they will give you the charges the duration the syllabus the things that will be covering okay Sure. Thank you. All right. Uh, so if you guys are learning Intune for the first time, uh, again, uh, the important thing is to make sure that you have a trial tenant, which is again this one. Uh, if you go, if you choose to go with uh, what sort of mentioned, I think he suggested uh, that it can uh, be uh, free up to 12 months. Uh, try that method. Uh, but the bottom goal is to have your own Intune tenant set up so that you can understand what I'm talking about. And the few of the things that we will learn here is basically uh, how Intune works, how the policy gets delivered from Intune portal to devices, how devices receive those policy and how the action happens, right? Uh, for example, let's say if you are deploying any policy on Intune portal and uh, Okay, let me, oops. Let me actually stop sharing my screen and start again. Yeah, you guys should be able to see my screen. So basically, uh, if you guys uh, have a tenant, uh, we'll be able to see uh, what kind of uh, device policy are we pushing, how we are pushing it, what are the traces that we are uh, uh, taking, uh, how graph API comes into picture, how that's relevant. Many of you would be uh, interested in the in tune interview. Uh, so that will also help you. Also, just to give you a short thing, uh, the short 
farm to reach in tune portal is akka.ms slash me mac m e m s c so if you type that you will be landing up to your in tune portal directly we are not able to see screen you're not able to see yeah yeah oh yeah now yes we can see okay sorry i forgot to hit uh, click on share so as talking akka.ms/memac is the short form of uh, you know to reach uh, to into in portal and i'm not sure why the uh, people are still joining although it's one hour late i think someone missed coming at the time okay uh okay uh let's walk through the intune portal a little bit to see what information i'll be having here this is the landing page of your intune portal where you land up after creating your uh, lab tenant or uh, let's say if you are already working in intune you are already familiar with this endpoint.microsoft.com is the url this gives you a very single pane of glass of like what kind of uh, failures uh, are present although it doesn't give you much uh, information so you'll have to drill down clicking on each tab to understand what it happens the guided scenarios are very basic about if you are starting new then what are the basic things that you you can deploy with a very single click like a, deploying a windows security baseline or a deploying m365 application this particular has been uh, uh added in with the intune uh, tech community blog so whatever get posted there comes up here directly although i'm not sure if admins are using it uh the most important thing here which comes uh, into picture is knowing your intune infrastructure where does intune sit in the cloud world of azure for your tenant so if you will be creating your tenant let's say in india location you will have something different here uh the the important thing to note is the mdm authority is microsoft intune if you are using sscm you might have sscm mention or co management service release is basically what version of intune are you using so let's say and uh, and and the people who are already working in intune field can relate that if you are let's say if you are facing some problem and you reached out to microsoft uh support team where they said that okay this functionality is are not working and the product group is working and it will be fixed in april uh this is where uh, you can relate this uh, basically is the jan 2023 version of intune service and it basically uh, should have uh, 2302 in next couple of days because every month mid is close to what previous month's release would be in intune so if you are in march uh this would show up uh, as uh, 2302 let means the feb version uh the connector status is basically if you have if your company is utilizing dedicated uh, uh device enrollment program for uh, uh, ios um uh, your uh, certificate connector for deploying skep and pkcs and all the all those uh, kind of scenarios so it, it will gives you a health check for those this uh, apn and this is a very uh, very basic setup that you guys will be doing apn is very important i'll be covering this in detail like as in why this is important why uh, uh, ios devices needs a apn certificate before you can enroll them and how does enroll uh, how does apn plays a very important role in uh, and and ios uh, and intune infrastructure this is also a very uh, good interview point question where uh, uh you have let's say if you ask someone about apn they say that apn certificate is required to have a connection with uh the apple push notification service or apple push notification server and that's uh, important for intune enrollment but uh again uh that's a very basic answer you need to understand where exactly apn sets into picture because let's say uh you have apn server here okay okay it's on different screen uh can you increase the size because uh, it's not visible clearly oh you're not able to see it uh, let me know if you're able to see it now ha huh, now it's clear mm. uh oh okay you also posted a chat sorry i was not checking the chat 
Okay, so these are things uh, basically that will come into picture. One important thing is uh, Service Health and Medicine Center. If you are already working with Intune, you will know the importance of this. If you're an admin, you will know the importance of this. But if you're not uh, related to any of those such things, uh, you might not care about this section. It basically talks about what are the issues which are happening in your Intune environment and how to get rid of them. Uh, L1 and L2 might not have access to this, so they'll have to depend on some other Intune folks to give them this information. Uh, this are uh, one important thing that they have recently done is uh, the help and support of uh, uh, how you seek help from Microsoft. Uh, let's say if you are uh, working with uh, uh, Microsoft Intune and you have some uh, issues and you want to troubleshoot a few of the scenarios yourself. Let's say you have a user who is not able to enroll a device and you want to understand that what's happening with this particular user. Uh, you can come down to this particular blade. Uh, click on user, find your user. Let's say I'm trying to find my user. And let's see what kind of information it gives you. Okay. So it gives it 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 brings up uh, if my account is enabled in Active Directory, Azure Active Directory or not. Am I in tune license or not? What kind of policy I have deployed? How many are showing compliant with the policy? How many are in error state? How many are in conflict? How many are in pending? Okay. One more important thing to uh, understand is uh, with respect to Intune is uh, it's not always about deploying the policy and, and, and making sure everything is working. It's also important to understand the scope of your boundary because Intune uh, works as a delivery mechanism uh, if it's delivering the policy to the devices. And there are many things which can go wrong, okay? So coming back to whiteboard, let me share my whiteboard once again. Uh, stop share, share my screen. Whiteboard. Okay, so okay, let's say this is your Intune. You have a device enrolled into Intune, and let's say if it's a Windows device by enrollment. Uh, don't worry guys, so we'll be discussing that in detail, but for now, just think of enrollment as doing certain number of steps on this device, which will start showing up in Intune so that this particular device will have an entry in Intune portal and you will be able to control it. Okay. The enrollment just mean that registering this device uh, into the cloud service so that the cloud service can start pushing the application. Now, Intune you will be having a portal now with the portal the admin basically uh, deploys the policy which utilizes a graph api which hits one of the microservices at the back end and that uh, understand what you need to do that basically triggers one of the mechanisms of notification and in notification it can be either APN, if you're talking about uh, iOS, it can be FCM, Firebase Cloud, Cloud Management System for uh, Android, and it can be WNS, Windows Notification Service for Windows, okay? This is for iOS, Android, and Windows, okay? And then it basically identifies that which particular uh, uh, device are you trying to reach out to, it gives an alert to that device and says, boss, there is something new for you. Go ahead and contact your MDM service. Now this particular device then comes to Intune saying, boss, I think you have something for me. And then it drops that payload to uh, that particular uh, machine directly over a OMA DM protocol. Okay, it's an open mobile alliance device management protocol, kind of a XML based where uh, troubleshooting on Windows is actually easy because you are able to see those things very clearly. Uh, Android and iOS are a little bit tricky because there you have to collect uh, different sorts of uh, device based logs like uh, on Android, you will collect uh, locket logs to understand what's happening. And then you have to also get yourself familiarized with the Android ecosystem because in most of the time in the logs, you have, what you see is 
uh, according to you might be the source of reason, but might be expected in Android world. Okay, so there might be many errors in Android which are expected, but we will be seeing that as okay, but that might be a possible chance that why this policy is not working. Okay, now in whole this uh, thing, there are only few things that is control uh, controllable. One is, are you able to push the policy from portal or not? If you have pushed it, these all things up to this, uh, like Graph API, Microsoft Services, Notification Service in Microsoft is happening at the back end. You don't have any control, you don't see it, you can't track it, okay? So there is nothing you could do if something goes wrong in the back end space. And by back end, I mean all these kind of services. Now, what you can confirm is, you can confirm if you were able to successfully deploy the policy or not, and at the uh, window side, if you are able to successfully receive the policy or not, these are the two things that you will mostly focus on, okay? And the all this path that happens is basically the delivery and Intune pays an important role in this. Now, one of the most common scenario in Intune world is you delivered a policy and it's not behaving accordingly. Let's say you deployed a policy to block camera, the device received the block camera, but even the camera is not getting blocked. Now at that point of time, you have to understand uh, which particular thing is controlling the camera. It's basically the component or owner. Let's say if it's on Windows uh, and Windows work on uh, CSPs, which is the configuration service providers, these are, basically the tree-based models where the uh, settings can come in from Intune and get connected. If you see the policy is getting deployed for block camera here, Intune job is done, okay? Then it's the Windows team, which will troubleshoot that why the CSP is not working and similar to Android and uh, iOS. Now, although for iOS and Android, uh, you will not be having any much trouble. I have seen these things happening mostly on Windows. Uh, where we have to raise cases with Microsoft to understand why this particular thing is not working. And that's why Intune is also called as delivery mechanisms oriented thing because you created a policy on portal, you deployed the policy on device and your job is done, okay? Now, troubleshooting and uh, uh, troubleshooting and, uh, uh, and, and, and and the investigation happens in, in, in a different scenarios like, uh, uh, policy deployment and uh, you have, sorry, uh, you figuring out what policy to deploy, how to uh, how to deploy that policy because most of the time, maybe let's say that policy is not available in a GUI mode and you have to do, or you have to figure out some custom OMI URI methods of uh, deploying that thing. Uh, also, uh, investigating on client side as into how to make sure that Intune has done its job. And this is where it gets uh, interested because uh, once you have to investigate the client, you then have to work with uh, different applications, OS architectures, uh, network uh, certificates, if your company is utilizing, let's say, a uh, SCEP certificate for uh, Wi-Fi or VPN authentication, you as an IT admin or you as a uh, Intune um, guy will have to deploy SCEP certificates, and then you have to make sure those SCEP certificates uh, are deployed correctly. And uh, because I have seen many of the things go wrong in the SCEP deployments and all, uh, where you have to troubleshoot uh, what exactly is supposed to happen, how the authentication is working, uh, how the authentication is failing, and then you have to adjust your SCEP profile to make sure that you are not doing anything wrong and all those kind of things. Okay, uh, if you guys are interested in SCEP, I'll be covering that. I already have that in, uh, in, in my agenda. So I'll be covering the SCEP uh, I think uh, the skeptic topic and the PKSIS topic actually, because that, that's important. Uh, 
this is just to give you a gist of like if you're working in, with Intune, what kind of technologies and infrastructure you will be exposed to and what are the things that will make your life easy if you have uh, understanding of those things, okay? Uh, so if uh, you are working with Intune, uh, operating systems are the ones where if you understand the architecture, it, it, it makes your job easy. Uh, if you understand the Android ecosystem well, if you understand the iOS ecosystem well, uh, it will be very easy to troubleshoot and navigate through the loggings, okay? Although the loggings uh, now are in a way that uh, if the user is having problem, there is a ticket with Microsoft, you just get an incident ID, you give the incident ID to the support, I think the support engineer, and they will do some analysis and get back to you. But there is a way that you can also copy those logs to yourself and then read those logs and figure out the problems for yourself. Uh, if you do that, obviously, uh, uh, that would be beneficial for you. And if, especially if you're here for the Intune interviews, I would recommend you to go through uh, that path and figure out how exactly the logs look like if a policy gets deployed. Obviously, I'll be showing you this, but it will make more sense if you yourself do this, okay? Uh, so investigation client is one where uh, you'll have and we'll, we'll spend most time on. And uh, the labs are the other things where uh, we'll uh, spend quite some time of uh, how exactly uh, one particular policy gets deployed, how to track down that policy, if uh, and how to do the enrollments. Okay, so next we'll be starting with the enrollments of like uh, starting with Windows. It's ba basically that's very easy to track. Um, because you have event where you have all those kind of lock mechanism, which is which makes things pretty easy on Windows, but obviously we'll be discussing that over for iOS and Android as well. So I'll pause for a few questions if you had, and then I'll start with the Windows enrollment and how does it look and feel like. If you have any question, uh, now's the time. Can we make auto report of this errors? Uh, Rahul, can you uh, elaborate your question a little bit? Yeah, actually in my organization, uh -huh. um, yeah, while we're deploying some policies, as you said that we have some certification issues over the client system, I mean to say, end user uh, computers. Okay. So in that between, can we handle such kind of issues through the uh, Intune to fix the multiple 800, 8,000 machines to the certificate error? Like what kind of certificate are you talking about? Like, is it due to any missing certificate? Uh, no, we already have multiple certificates on the computers, right? Okay. But while deploying some group policies and all that, as you said, mm -hmm. uh, we deployed some policies. Okay. Mm -hmm. But in while the synchronization between server and the clients, it says uh, certificate error. Mm -hmm. So actually, right now, I just joined from my cell phone. So I, I could not share okay. you the, uh, that error. But most of the times, we received this kind of error, certificate error. And policy could not deploy it successfully, even though if when we push the command gp update slash uh, sync. So you are talking about an on premises thing, okay? Uh, we are talking about Intune as a cloud solution. Correct. So uh, considering the certificate uh, error that you yeah. are seeing, uh, if you have investigated that, do you know the do you know the root cause of why that is being shown up? Because if you can relate that to a piece where let's say those certificate errors are coming up because you don't have a valid certificate of some kind or you are not able to uh, build the chain of trust of certificates then yes you have options to um, uh, like uh, bulk deploy those certificates and those things but if it's related completely to an on-premises group policy thing then no then Intune won't be able to help so that's why as I asked if you do you know the root cause of that uh, certificate issues Actually, this kind of issues only come up, come up after every month of second Tuesday when the patching is happened. Later on, like everything is working fine. We don't have any complaints. We don't have any incidents from users. But when every month of second Tuesday, when we deploying the patches, the errors come, comes up. Okay. I don't think this would be related to Intune, but if you want to troubleshoot, we can do this on, uh, I'll be having a troubleshooting, uh, troubleshooting session on Wednesday or Thursday. 
where I'll I'll spend time with you guys for any questions that you have, and you can then bring on or show me the error that you are having. Okay, if you're talking about the patch Tuesday, you might be doing some kind of work on those Windows machines where it might not be totally relevant to Intune at all. Okay, so you'll have to first scope it like which technology would be able to help you. If if that's an Intune thing, maybe we can. If that's not an Intune thing, maybe you can see uh, which component on the Windows is. Throwing you that error that it's not finding the certificate, or it's not matching the certificate, whatever, and then you see what kind of certificate it 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 has. Certificates are basically pretty easy to troubleshoot because it's an on-prem thing, and uh, there is always uh, like it it will either work or it will not if you have not the correct set of things, right? It's not a cl like cloud world where you can have everything correct but something goes wrong at the microsoft side your whole thing goes for a toss right so if it's on prem thing uh bring this up on a wednesday where we can troubleshoot and help with you like how uh, if, if this at all is really true in tune hey uh, i was asking a little uh, page where you are on the in tune uh, where those errors are showing right so can we automate those to send over the email or something what errors are coming that's what uh, my actually question was. Yes, you can. Uh, there is no direct way, but uh, uh, so these all information that Microsoft Intune gives you is it's picking up from the uh, the Cosmos DB, the database for your tenant, right? And not every information is present here. Okay, it gives you information. Uh, on, uh, it gives you uh, uh, information only to those for which it has GUI, like the graphical user interface, and the Microsoft developer thinks that it will be beneficial for you. But if you have a custom requirement of like sending you an email like every time this error comes up, what you can do is, if you are using, uh, if you are already familiar uh, in using Graph API, you can do a custom PowerShell script to run every five to 10 minutes and identify those new errors from Graph API, and then maybe utilize a Power Platform to trigger you uh, uh, this uh, uh, email. Or if you are utilizing Power Platform, it's very easy then. Okay, no, so graphical only we have to use right now. So there is a RBAC they have implemented, so we have very limited access. I don't know whether we can no, with graph, the, uh, with just the yeah. portal access, uh, no, there's no such things. I mean, you'll have to drill down like everything. Uh, okay. You'll not be able to make sense out of it. Okay, it's not that very so informative. So in generic also in reporting, uh, in reporting tab, I think we can generate these error reports and. Uh, so in reports, uh, in reports also, uh, like you see on the screen, uh, it gives you a very basics of the reporting that you have. Also, but you're if, on, you're, if you we are on white page, so oh, I'm not okay. able to see it. Hold on, let me stop my. Uh, not the recording. Let me know if if you see my yeah. Uh, okay. okay, so. Uh, if you're looking for a, a, a dedicated uh, uh, information about your uh, Intune infrastructure, uh, what I have seen is if you export this uh, to the diagnostic setting or let's say uh, to the log analytic workspace, uh -huh. okay, uh, it will start pushing all the information to your log analytic workspace where you can utilize a Kusto query to uh, run your things and uh, make more sense out of it okay but by default you have very less uh, uh reporting and uh, those infrastructure available to you although we have reports okay if you go ahead you will have report but these are very basics okay you mm -hmm. have a data warehouse which gives you a number of things which can be used for power bi reporting it's good stuff but if you are focusing mostly on errors uh that too on uh, the uh in tune side of like the cloud errors, it, it it it's very basic. But if you're, if but if you want like uh, the Windows error, like what kind of things are happening on Windows, you can do this, uh, 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 that diagnostic thing. Uh, you can add all those logs. Like it will be visible in your. Okay, let me show you. Actually, it will make you more sense. 
So let me go to. So basically, what I'm trying to do here is uh, mm -hmm. kind of you know whatever the whatever the devices are not in sync, right? Mm -hmm. uh, which are actually kind of uh, risk for us, and we need to do some troubleshooting on those. Mm -hmm. uh, so if we can have that report uh, in a weekly or something, send it through. So, so somebody if the device are it. not in sync, uh, are you guys not utilizing the compliance thing? Like if Third the device is report. not syncing. Hello. Sorry. Some... Yeah, I think so. So yeah, uh, question to you. So if you are uh, like targeting that the device is not syncing for let's say for multiple days, are you not already utilizing that device compliance parameter? No, not yet. Okay, because that's easy for you. And there's a default uh, reporting available in Intune where uh, you can mark those devices to be not compliant if they're not syncing for let's say three days. And if they are not syncing, you mark them as not compliant and block them via conditional access. It will be easy for you. Then to go ahead and figure out like which all devices not syncing because that gives you a, a more work without achieving anything. So follow that uh, Microsoft's that zero trust approach. It will be more easier for you that you don't even trust your own enrolled device and that's why you will check for compliance every time they try to access something. And, and if they are not logged in for two days, they'll be out of compliant and hence no access. So you don't even have to do anything. Okay. No, in, in our case, sorry, we are going a lot of in depth, but yeah, yeah. Uh, in our case, a uh, lot of time it happens whenever, you know, uh -huh. uh, there is a challenge basically when they are on the VPN only, uh -huh. uh, the sync is actually happening. Uh, I don't know what methodology they have used on InfoSec team, but that's something we have even a challenge. But mm -hmm. a lot of people, uh, they are not using VPN, so they are showing as an in-sync, right? So mm -hmm. I can't directly block them, but yeah, I do have to need to get the report so I can work with them and then get them in a sync sometimes in connecting VPN or something. Uh Okay, by default, there is none, but uh, you will have to play around with uh, different technologies. Let's say this is the log analytic workspace for the Intune uh, data in my tenant. Okay, let's, for example, this is one of the Intune data. Okay, these are the things that uh, it captures. Okay, so you'll have to basically capture one thing that makes sense for you. Let's say if you are targeting uh, the last contact time. Okay, so this machine, let's, let's say 17.7 is pretty old for my thing, okay? Maybe I can mm -hmm. utilize this parameter and build something uh, on top of it. But it's uh, totally up to you uh, that what you want to do. Uh, if you find something, you can click a new alert rule and then modify those things to trigger you an email. Okay. Okay, okay, perfect. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you'll have to play around with those kind of things. But yes. uh, this course is very basic to Intune. I'll, after this course, like after 2.5 months, I'll have an advanced course where uh, we'll be working on few of the custom solutions that the industries and uh, like implemented uh, to just to give you a head start that what you can do with Intune and different things like Intune Data Warehouse, this logmatic workspace, and how uh, you can be a part of Microsoft Sentinel, like uh, uh, that's a security sim solution from Microsoft, and how Intune plays an important role in that. Okay, all those kind of things. But yeah, uh, this is uh, something which is coming next. Uh, so if you can stay uh, till that, it will be great. No, I'm Otherwise, planning to have both now because okay, yeah. So I'll go with, I'll check with Amit and yeah. I'll be probably starting this. All right, yeah, yeah. But yeah, um, uh, bring this up in, in any of the Wednesday session. And if, if there is not much from the other people, we can take this one because this will be advanced for many of the folks uh, who are still learning in tune, okay. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, and uh, uh, if you have that Visual Studio subscription, you will uh, be able to get all these things uh, because this Loganetic workspace needs your Azure subscription. It doesn't work on license. And then as you can see, it has uh, four Intune tables, that four Intune databases that it gives you information from. Intune devices is one that you can have n number of things and then you can play around. Okay, this is very powerful actually. So it gives okay. you the... Uh, whole database and it's up to you that what kind of insights you want to uh, capture for yourself, which will be beneficial for you. Okay. Yeah, I do have visual subscription. So perfect. Can perfect. Yeah. Perfect. All right. 
All right. Uh, any other questions, guys? Okay. If not, I'll uh, move with the basics of like, let's say, uh, enrolling a device to Microsoft Intune. Before that, I'll show you my uh, device blade where you can ha just have a gist of uh, how does device looks up in the Intune portal and what are the significance of that. Okay, hopefully you guys should be able to see that. All right, so these are the list of the Windows 10 or 11 devices. 10 mostly I see. Yeah, Windows 10 devices, which I had enrolled them at some point of time. Uh, it gives you a number of information. It gives you lots of many things. If you click on them, it will give you a device specific view of what they are collecting. There's a requirement prerequisite for the enrollment of device. Nothing as such, uh, only uh, Aaron, uh, iOS has a requirement of APNS certificate to be put in place. Apart from that, uh, no specific prereq for uh, uh, those devices. Okay. And after enrollment, you'll be able to see uh, these many number of attributes which were collected from the device. It's up to you if you are able to use uh, any of these. If not, mostly organization utilize it for deploying policy to hard, uh, hard code the device or like to strengthen the security system and the boundary and also to make sure that they are utilizing the conditional access in the form of device compliance. These are the major two things which they um, utilize this for. Uh, so one important thing, if uh, let's let me go back to uh, this uh, Azure Blade, okay, Azure Active Directory. Oh, it's hanging now. So one important thing that you will always see with related to Intune devices is you will always see an attribute called as Azure AD registered and Azure AD joined, okay? Now Azure AD joined basically comes into picture where you have a Windows device uh, and it's a corporate owned device where your corporate has given your device and that is a corporate property and they would basically join it to Azure AD so that you will have access to uh, corporate resources. Okay, Azure AD registered is basically for mobile devices, but your Windows device can also be done as Azure AD registered. The significance of these two is just to make sure that the Azure AD is aware that there is a device uh, uh, which is present in my database. And then I have to do some calculative task on this. Now, how this comes into picture is, let's say you have a mobile device where you access your corporate email, okay? And uh, your corporate wants that if employee has enrolled the device into Intune, then only I will allow access to the email. Now this scenario is controlled by something called as conditional access. Now how conditional access will work, we will discuss that in detail that how exactly Intune certificate come into picture, okay? But for now, uh, the important thing is to make sure that your device has a presence in Azure AD. Now Azure AD will only able to check the device compliance if it is aware that that device is present under my database. And this device of yours will be present in the database in either one way, either Azure AD join or Azure AD registered. Now mobile platform devices like Android and iOS can always be Azure AD registered. They cannot be Azure AD joined. Azure AD joined can only be for Windows machines, okay? So keep that in mind. Now, all the devices that you see here is uh, basically, uh, okay, uh, Aaron, I'll take your question the last, okay? Uh, is basically is where uh, either I have autopilot that machine to their device or I have manually enrolled the device. This symbol that you see here signifies the autopilot. So if I keep my, Mouse here, it gives you autopilot device information there, right? Okay, this symbol 
is different from all these symbols. If you notice, this is an easy way to track like if that is an autopilot device or not. Okay, now what uh, I am talking about is uh, let me share my Windows 10. It's 11 actually, I believe. Come on, yeah. Okay, it's a Windows uh, 11 machine test machine, which I have created just for the demo. Okay, let's first check the host name. Okay, this device is not present in Intune. I have not enrolled it the device anywhere. I have just kept the device. Uh, uh, I have created this device in Azure Virtual Machine just for the demo, and it's not even present in Azure AD. Now, what is the one command that you can run and uh, uh, check the status of uh, the device. Uh, one important thing for doing troubleshooting is uh, DSRH CMD uh, space forward slash status. It gives you if that device is Azure AD joined or not, if it's domain joined or not. Domain joined means local AD joined, Azure AD joined means uh, it's joined to Azure AD directly. And this, uh, it also gives you information about other user state uh, workplace join, single sign-on information. If you if you are logging in, in with the user who has enrolled this device, it will be Azure AD PRT's primary refresh token, which is used for uh, single sign-on and as well as conditional access. Uh, but uh, that's the other thing that we'll discuss in, in future, okay? But this is the one of the common thing that even Microsoft support will ask you to run if you say a scenario that my device seems to be joined to Azure AD and in tune compliant, but still I'm not able to access my email or some other resources which are protected by conditional access. Okay. Now, if you are a big organization. Sorry, the Azure is registered. Uh, what will be showing here? Will be interpreted. Right? Workplace joint. Yes, it will be turned to workplace joint as yes. It will be Azure registered. Yes. Azure already registered was earlier known as workplace joint. Uh, so in Windows, they have not changed the attribute name, but on Portal, uh, you have that name changed to Azure already registered. Okay. Okay. So if you are a very big organization, if you already have a on-premises infrastructure, many of the companies, what they go with is a hybrid Azure already joint. That just means that you have a local AD domain joint Windows 10 machine or Windows 11 machine, which will also be joined to Azure AD. Now, why would you do it? As a presence in your local AD, your machine can only access those resources which are controlled within the local AD. But if you have to access any cloud resources which are present in Azure AD, your device has to be present in Azure AD. Now, how do you make sure that your device is present in Azure AD? you also have to follow a Azure AD Connect again. It also has the power of syncing your local AD machines to your Azure AD, okay? And we'll be discussing that not via the demo, but via the concept of like how exactly that works and how a GPO uh, plays an important role of uh, uh, syncing your uh, Windows 10 on-premise machine to cloud and how that's, uh, that turns into a hybrid Azure AD. Uh, join um, a laptop, okay, or machine. So if uh, uh, nowadays, uh, what happens if you're, if you're a new employee uh, who is uh, uh, signing up with a company and you just got a new laptop, your company would have already deployed a Windows Autopilot profile where if as soon as you open up your windows and enter your credential it will start receiving the autopilot profile from intune and it will configure the whole laptop for you including deploying your applications uh, deploying policies deploying uh, wi-fi networks deploying wi-fi certificates and everything to your device and like within 15 to 20 minutes your device will be fully ready to use now if that's not the case and uh, earlier let's say if you have to register your device manually to the intune what you will do is you'll go to settings and uh, then you'll be going to accounts and then you'll click on access work on school 
and then you will here you will have an option to connect now this is the individual uh, device specific method of going to register your device to intune uh, companies don't use or prefer this thing for obvious reasons because you have to do this per device. The companies mostly do an autopilot profile where they directly buy the laptops from, let's say, for Dell, and Dell upload the hardware hash and does the autopilot profile. We'll discuss those in detail when, once we reach to the autopilot thing. Now, yes, here I have a small question. If I have a two different devices, for example, Android and iPhone, yeah. so uh, if I'm using Microsoft Outlook from Android, and another Microsoft Teams from iPhone. Mm -hmm. So Intune will synchronize at the same time with the both of the different devices. So Intune has nothing to do with Outlook or Teams, okay? So if you mean to say Outlook and Teams are controlled by conditional access policy that requires your device to be compliant and for compliance, you have to be uh, dependent on Intune, Intune, then yes, Intune will do the job for both the devices. Okay, noted. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, you'll be clicking on uh, join this device to Azure Active Directory. And here you will log in or give in your uh, cloud credential of, let's say, whatever uh, license that you have assigned to that particular user. I have this user with Intune and Azure already licensed. I will enter the credential here and do a small MFA. And if everything goes right, which normally doesn't during a presentation, but let's see. So it says, make sure this, this is your organization. It asked me to confirm, okay, if I do this, this user is an ad, this user will become an admin on my Windows machine. I don't care. And I go and hit next. Now with autopilot, Intune gives a flexibility that the end user should not be a local admin. And you have that option there, but this is a test machine. So I'm, I'm giving that, uh, making that user and, uh, uh, local admin as well. Now, once this is done, uh, it will be said, uh, it will be saying as managed by cloud infra. And if you click on info, it will start syncing the device with Intune. And after some time, it will have all the policies name and application name. If I'm pushing that from my Intune portal, okay. You can hit sync, you can uh, click on sync to initiate a formal manual sync from the client side. And this is usually done during the troubleshooting that you push something and if it's taking time, you click on sync um, and then it started syncing with the cloud. Now, one important thing to notice uh, uh, with sync, what happens and with pushing the policy, what happens is, let me go to the whiteboard and show you guys if I still have that. You told uh, yeah. Sorry, you told uh, for you enrolled the device we need a credit port. So we you just went to account and you put your Azure D credentials. Now the device is getting enrolled in the so background, the company portal will get installed, no? No, uh, company portal is a requirement. Like company portal is basically your uh, a mobile device management agent, okay? It's it's basically which understand the OMRDM protocol. Windows is inbuilt having a OMRDM protocol uh, agent, so it doesn't need a separate company portal. Although you can have a, I'm hearing some noise, so I'm going to mute few of the folks. Uh, unmute if you have to speak, okay? Uh, so in Windows, you don't need any dedicated company portal to do the enrollment and do all those kind of tasks. But if you want, you can still have company portal on Windows machine and go with the uh, like uh, uh, UPN and then authenticate and do all those kind of stuff, okay? For accessing application, which are uh, deployed as an available, you will definitely be utilizing company portal, okay? I'm just showing you another way of... What is what is the word you told, OMAD and what is it? Uh, that's a protocol. That's a OMA DM, like Open Mobile Alliance Device Management Protocol. Okay, that is okay. You're telling uh, for Windows, uh, this protocol will take care. No need of separate company portal. And until unless 
we are making the application is available and installing like software yes like yes in ios and android there is no inbuilt uh that uh, oma dm protocol agent that oma dm agent so that's why we have to separately put a agent there it's just like uh, uh you deliver uh, you order food from swiggy so you need to have a swiggy app but let's say in swiggy's organization they are building one mobile device which comes with a agent by default so you don't need to deploy swiggy application or install swiggy application it's similar to this since we own uh, like since uh, microsoft is uh, owning windows they have already built a mdm client which understand oma dm protocol that's why you don't need a company portal as a separate thing okay just to okay. give you clarity uh okay it seems i lost connectivity to my that uh, device i'll have to again turn it on but if that thing had went through i should have be able to see a fab yeah so it came okay it's not compliant because uh, that has to sync with intune and it uh, should have been up and online and running while doing the sync but it went offline that's why it's saying no but after 5 minutes of it it will be showing yes and i'll be able to then push all the policies from intune to this particular uh, device okay now in most of the organizations uh, what happens is you would have devices assigned or tied to a particular uh, uh, official group let's say finance would have a different set of devices it would have different set of devices so normally it makes sense to club those devices into a similar uh, or in, into a same group so normally what you would end up doing is creating dynamic groups where you would have uh, all those devices belonging to the similar uh, organization unit club together okay so let's say if i and this just for the guys who are seeing this for the first time i believe most of you would already be knowing this group type would be security because security group types are the only groups on which you can assign licenses and do some kind of checks like conditional access okay now let's say i'm naming this uh, group as fab devices and uh, i want it to be a dynamic device i don't want every time to be adding those devices manually so i'll just write a query not write a query just select a drop down so let's say how do i choose it do i have a name display name okay display name uh contents i had fab in the title so it builds the query for user directly device dot display name contains fab and i just click on save as soon as i create it it will create a dynamic group run that query in all the azure id devices present in my whole tenant but there is only one device which i just registered and it will populate that device in that particular group in next few minutes so let's go to that group and i have fab devices okay it has not grabbed it yet but it will be grabbing us in like few minutes okay now once sorry this device is azure ad joined right i mean I, I, yes so you told the windows device uh, mostly it will be azure ad registered no uh, i said that for mobile devices oh my god god so if this device is, needs to be azure ad registered what what i have to do? i mean i mean I, can you explain bit more about azure ad join and register okay uh, sorry for that my device is not up again <laughs> as of now but if you remember in the screen uh, where i went on access worker school account and i clicked on connect it prompted me for join azure active directory and it gave me a upn entering field right correct okay so if you do not click on join azure active directory and just enter your upn and do next it will do your device azure ad registered okay i uh, will uh, will i lose any will i lose anything if my device is just azure ad registered I mean it depends so you can access your uh, you can access your corporate resources depending on what is the 
access policies being deployed to your uh, devices controls, right? Like let's say you mostly control those access via conditional access, okay? Now, if you uh, have a conditional access and uh, uh, the conditional access means that the device has to be present in Azure AD, it doesn't care if it's Azure AD registered or Azure AD joined, you are good to go. Okay, you, you don't have to worry about anything else. Yeah. Azure AD joins uh, gives you a few extra benefits over Azure AD registered that you can log in with your corporate credential directly using the UPN on your Azure AD join machine and you will have a single sign on behavior across the machine. Now, accessing the resources is a different thing altogether. You can still access all those resources while Azure AD registering your Windows machine and uh, you can still have the same level of access as you already joined, okay? It's just that a easy way of managing the devices if they are company owned, and then it makes sense to have as you already joined because your company owns it and they uh, do a whole set of deployment and um, uh, in autopilot where they totally uh, uh, join that to Azure Active Directory, okay? Uh, you mostly would do Azure AD registered if that's your personal device, okay? If it's if if, if there's a personal laptop that you have, uh, you would be fine with just Azure AD registered. You don't have to do Azure AD join and you'll still be able to access all the services. To sign on, uh, Azure AD registered also, we can, uh, uh, we can do a single sign on policy, right? We can deploy a single sign on future, right? Yes, you can. But uh, it again depends on uh, like in Azure AD join, you will have single sign on to everything, every corporate resource, uh, which are part of, let's say, modern auth. You will have that to everything. But on uh, uh, this Azure AD registered, you'll have only to the corporate resources that, that are modern auth capable. It will not give you for uh, your uh, on premises or all those sort of things, right? Okay, got it. Uh, so, uh, this is one last question. Uh, now, yeah. Now the device is getting enrolled. Okay, mm -hmm. what are the folders will get created if I want to know uh, uh, the troubleshooting? No, uh, in enrollment troubleshooting, mm -hmm. uh, where uh, where I to have to start with? I mean, in so, it will be active, I understand, uh, but uh, in in up uh, in the computer, no, I mean the machine. If it is not enrolled, uh, where I have to start with? Which so in Windows, uh, the Windows event viewer is your best. Uh, troubleshooting buddy, you'll have to start from the Windows event viewer and see what step is giving you the enrollment failure, okay? Uh, I'll be discussing the enrollment failure in my next, uh, sorry, enrollment flow in my next session where we will be discussing what exactly happens behind the company portal logs. Like uh, if you enter the UPN and give you the credential, then what happens? How does that device started to show up in the Intune Blade, how Intune authenticates, what kind of uh, certificate building happens, um, what kind of uh, uh, things happen at Azure AD level that uh, causes the device to start showing up at different blades, okay? And once that is clear, you'll be able to understand where exactly uh, you have to look. Uh, to understand um, what went wrong. Obviously, the device side is where you will uh, start looking if you have a device side failure. That means a user tried to enroll a device and the device was not getting enrolled, but the same user was able to enroll the other device. That means there was some device specific thing. So we will start in to drill down the device logs. In Windows, it will always be event viewer under the application and device management. I'll be showing you in next class or like where to see that and what to see in it and what to make sense. Uh, like um, and most of the time, it's not that uh, self-explanatory that, okay, if this means this, if this is the error, what does it mean and what do you have to look? But I'll uh, tell you how to collect those information and um, what how to make sense out of it, okay. And similarly for Android and iOS, so I'll be covering those uh, scenarios as, as well, where uh, in Android uh, logs, we'll be able to see the enrollment flow. And in iOS also, we'll be able to see the enrollment flow and uh, um, those kind of things. It's actually easier to troubleshoot in Windows and see what kind of things gets created. Uh, if you're, you are already working in Intune and if, or if you are already working to a corporate where your device is already enrolled to Intune, 
if you are having a windows go to the personal store certificate store of that device and you will be able to see us in tune certificate for that particular device and that's how uh, the Intune is able to uh, authenticate and identify your device. And similar thing is happening with Azure AD where that is being used, uh, used uh, utilized for conditional access. The conditional access always starts from the device. It's not never from the Azure AD sites. Um, that's an interesting fact that we'll learn in this uh, uh, course of session as well. Uh, Aaron, I'm not sure if you have question. There is a requirement for Windows devices to integrate and policy compliance. Example, Windows 10 also needs to be enrolled. We'll be going over graph API. If you have a particular scenario in mind, we can definitely go through it. I will be covering a very basic of graph API, like capturing a, a network uh, a, a browser trace of creating a policy to show how exactly the graph query is being sent to a microservice and what it returns. Graph API is very powerful. Uh, you can club with PowerShell to give you a number of information so it will be very basic so if you have something in mind i do let me know i'll try to cover that and uh, with that uh if you have any questions re related to the pricing related to the course related to the structure do reach out on this number and uh amit who is the coordinator for this course will be helping you guys to understand uh we'll be having sunday sessions next week like coming weekend it will be on saturday but then uh it will be on sunday uh wednesday i can do a quick uh one hour hour of quick q a if you are uh, building lab and or anything or if you are already working in intune and if you have some corporate questions you can come with your question and we can try to troubleshoot it in that what is the time Wednesday. it's wednesday it's not yet decided but i am thinking about 8 pm ist but uh, if something uh, else works for majority of you i can try but i'll prefer anything after uh, 6 pm If you want a little late, it, I can do a little late as well. All right. Uh, any more questions, guys? Uh, how we can be in touch with you? I, so I think uh, uh, the guys who are uh, who have already paid or will be paying, there will be a separate WhatsApp group created and uh, you can ask your questions in that and we'll be sharing my email id on that and you can just reach me out on that one that i'll be checking on daily basis so you can um, um, uh, you can get my response quicker but if you have something uh, concrete or something uh, which you want to understand over call or over demo we can connect on wednesday Oh, is there any any details on the content or syllabus what you will be covering uh, so that we can... i have already shared with amit get in sync with that uh, amit on this number and he'll share that with you all right all right guys so if there's no more question okay uh, this course is enough to land a job in the market yeah uh, this was created in the context of uh, giving you an opportunity to get an Intune job. After this training, you should be able to grasp or uh, understand um, up to a level of like uh, having a three-year experience in Intune. So you should be good. Uh, but the lab is a must. So uh, you have to uh, build the lab and then uh, uh, because... Uh, I'll also be giving you uh, lab uh, scenarios. That's not mandatory. That's only for the guys who want to uh, test in their lab and have access to the test devices because not everybody will have access to test devices. If you have, you can play around with that, those things, but that will give you an added advantage of uh, understanding Intune in depth. Because Intune is basically a device side troubleshooting and knowing uh, what policy to deploy uh, to what kind and uh, uh, what are the capabilities 
it has nothing else because the backend is mostly taken care by Microsoft. Uh, so you don't have to troubleshoot the service fabric or the Cosmos DB or anything, or even the network thing at Microsoft site. You only have to concern about the certificates and the mobile devices at your site, at your site and your network site and your device uh, specific things. Do we need to learn SSM to go through it as well? No, not at all. SSM is not at all required for this and we will not be covering any SSCM technologies or co-management in this one. This is purely in tune cloud technology. Any certificate will be given? No, uh, I don't think uh, we'll be giving any certificate. Uh, you can, however, do a Microsoft Intune certificate. That will be easy for you. Uh, but I don't think that certificate has any uh, it is because in interview it's uh, all questions it doesn't add any value unless it's it's like those certificates where you have to like cissp or those kind of certificate uh but the only thing that i can uh, promise is uh, the session are going to be in depth the session are going to be troubleshooting oriented and investigative oriented it will not be just uh, Okay, deploy a bit locker policy. Here is how you do it. Enroll a device. Here is how you do it. No, no, not that kind. We'll be giving you a demo how it's done, what happens in the background. If something goes wrong, what you can do. And if you are already working in a company and if you have like uh, done everything, then what else you can do to get quick support? Mm -hmm. Co-management point is also included in this course. Uh, I have not included that in this one. But if there is any specific that you want to understand in co-management, uh, do ping me. I can try to cover that if, if uh, many people are asking for that. Uh, reach out to that mobile number. Uh, I'll be sharing that email. I'll have to create a new email address and then send it to you. So uh, that will take 30 minutes from my side. Reach out to this number after one hour and you'll have all the information. Uh, is it only, sorry, is it only weekend batches available or any, any weekday batches? Only weekend batches. Wednesday, I'm planning for a uh, like a troubleshooting classes. If you have doubts, like a doubt session or something, like if you try to do something and it didn't work, and if you have error on your portal or uh, in your company or doing some intune thing and it's not working, only those kind of things. The sessions will be on weekends. So two hour session per week. Per week, yeah. Okay. All right then. Thanks guys for your time. Uh, if you have any further questions, please reach out on the number mentioned on the screen and um, we can then answer you. All right. Thanks. Have a nice day. Take care. Hey, thank you, everyone. Thank you.